Hey y'all, I just jumped out of Shrek's penis and I'm here to do a review or ranking. I guess both, because I, I do both. I don't know, I, I thought this would be a cool intro. I, I, I don't know. Because like, you know how the alien, he comes out of his stomach and it's like, I thought it would be kind of like that. Alien ranking. <laughs> Romulus just dropped, so today we are going to be ranking every single Alien movie in the franchise. And this includes the Alien vs. Predator movies. Not going to leave those out. I know some people do. Not me. I'm, I'm, just, I'm just the best, you know? <laughs> Subscribe. I just recently watched all these movies for the very first time, and I can now say... I'm an alien fan. Let's go. Ooh, where's that? Do I get something? Do I get a prize? These movies were a lot of fun. Great characters, great practical effects and kills, and so much variety within the franchise. This franchise has existed for over four decades, with some films being heralded as all time movie classics, while others are hailed as fucking dog poop, donkey shit fuck. I'm talking about you, buddy. All right, we'll, we'll get into him, all right? Pretty soon, because he's at the fucking bottom. Not only this, some of the most amazing directors of our time have worked in this franchise, such as David Fincher, James Cameron, Ridley Scott, all excellent, fantastic directors. So I love this franchise, and I cannot wait to delve into these nine movies and rank them. Be sure to leave your comments down below, because I will read them, and I am super interested in hearing your guys' thoughts and rankings on this franchise. Coming in ninth place for me is Alien Resurrection. <laughs> Now look, I know people out there, they love this movie. They think it's a fun, good time. I'm not one of those people. I respect your decision, but for me, I just, I did not like this movie that much. And I'm gonna tell you why, all right? This is one freaking goofy ass movie, dude. Especially since I marathoned all nine of these movies in one night. This one especially stood out and not in a good way because its tone was way out of left field. One reason why this movie feels so odd is because the writer, Joss Whedon, and the director, Jean-Pierre Jeunet, I, th I don't think that's how you pronounce it, they could not agree on how to do this movie. Joss Whedon claimed he was mad the director was not bringing his script to life in the way he envisioned. And director Jean-Pierre was saying he doesn't even like Joss Whedon's writing or filmography, whatever. So I... <laughs> Don't know how those two ended up working together, but they did, and so we got this. And when you have two different people with completely different visions on how the movie should be made, working on two of the most important jobs in making a movie, disaster is bound to happen. Now initially, I was actually pretty excited for this movie. A movie doing things differently and trying new things can be really fun sometimes, but this one just did not do it for me. I'm the kind of guy that likes my horror movies to take themselves seriously, because when they don't take themselves seriously, I don't. And this movie can be so unserious that it loses so much of the tension and the creepiness that makes Aliens so good. And I don't mind if they implement humor into these movies like other movies in this franchise did it excellently and it was funny and it worked. And this one, it was just weird and annoying and just felt so out of place. Like I love Ron Perlman, but the way they wrote his character was just weird and uncomfortable and I just, it was, I did not, I <laughs> did not like it. Don't want to play basketball, I know some other indoor sports. Nothing to do with Ron Perlman, just the writing of his character, it was just so bad. And the way certain scenes play out is just so cheesy and goofy, and it feels so out of place in this franchise. Like, it straight up sometimes feels like a cartoon. There is literally a scene where a dude, he takes a gun and he's like, I got this, guys. He shoots it in the ceiling and it bounces off the walls and hits the guy right behind him. That was goofy as fuck, dude. That's like a cartoon, dude. It doesn't... I don't... I don't want that in my Alien movie, unfortunately. I was just so annoyed by the constant goofiness, and it was way too much. And for whatever reason, this movie just completely ruins Ripley. In the last few movies, she was such a great character, strong motivation, so much charm. Not only that, the sacrifice she made in the previous movie was such a good way to send her off, so honorable and noble and totally in character. In this movie, they brought her back to life just to make her dull, devoid of all personality, and forced with bad, cheesy-ass force one-liners the entire time. Who do I have to fuck to get off this boat? Now, I know she's supposed to be an old clone of herself who is also an alien-human hybrid who is also the mother of the alien-human shit. Whatever that is. Even just saying that 
The plot is so convoluted. It's literally all over the place. But the fact that they brought her back and just took away everything that we really liked about Ripley and just made her so dull and uninteresting, it was just such a letdown to watch. It could have been really cool. I think we got a glimpse of what it should have been. There was one scene with Ripley that I thought was really good. And that was when she goes into this little facility and she sees all the failed clones of her. And then one of them can talk and it's in pain and it just wants to die. And so she has to kill all of her old clones. She starts to cry. That's like the only shred of emotion she had. The only little bit of character we got to see from her. That should have been the entire time. We should have seen that Ripley. Not the stoic like, who do I have to fuck to get off this ship? What the fuck? No, that is not Ripley, bro. And this movie had like three other good scenes. I really liked when she fell into the swarm of aliens and was sinking. That was cool. I liked when that guy had the alien coming out of his stomach and he stood up and just started beating the hell out of this other guy. That was pretty funny. I also liked the way they killed that creature at the end of the movie. It's super memorable and just gnarly and disgusting. A beautiful demonstration of practical effects. Even though right before that, it's a little weird. It looks like Ripley's about to fuck her alien son. Bro, well, this is a little too fucking intimate for mom and son bro they're they're like borderline about the fuck <laughs> it's i don't know it's uh <laughs> It is really weird. I don't, I don't know. This film had amazing practical effects and an actually really talented cast. All the actors are stellar. It just sucks dick they have to work with this bad script and bad story. I'll probably never watch this movie again. Coming in eighth place for me is Alien 3 The Assembly Cut. <laughs> Very excited for this movie as David Fincher is one of my, honestly, probably my favorite director of all time. He's made some of my favorite movies, Gone Girl, Seven, Zodiac Killer, The Social Network, just such a great catalog of films. And then you got this one. Everyone says this is David Fincher's worst movie and it's, it's not very good. Although to be fair, this movie wasn't even entirely his. This movie had gone through several different directors before David Fincher even got his hands on it. And once he did get his hands on it, he had to fight like hell with the producers just to get an ounce of creative control. And despite him getting some creative control, the producers still ended up severely cutting and trimming down his movie. The script also went through so many different drastic changes and was constantly in flux while they were filming. And when the film finally hit theaters, it was hit with massive waves of disappointment. And part of that was because an earlier version of the script leaked, which said there was going to be a human and xenomorph war on Earth, which that sounds like a pretty damn good movie. I kind of wish we saw that too. Instead, we got a movie that does a lot of the same things that the other alien movies did but they did it better we have to watch people for at least an hour get slowly killed off and rediscover what the aliens are and while all that's happening we have to watch other characters make frustratingly stupid decisions the entire time for example ripley does not tell a single person that there is an alien in the prison even though she knows it she does she does not tell anyone and every time this one dude that she had sex with asks her all the time is there something we should know is there anything going on do you know what's going on while everybody is dying she just refuses to tell him until half the prisoners are already dead and then she finally says it a lot of this film drags on and it's just not very exciting there are still parts however that i really loved the fact that ripley is pregnant with the alien queen is such an amazing idea and they needed to go way more into that in the movie the whole movie should have been focused on that like that is such an interesting idea and it, it plays out really really cool in the movie but they don't do enough with it it doesn't really even come into the movie until like halfway through the other thing they should have definitely explored more was the company because the company wanted to keep ripley alive and quarantine her because of the baby queen and instead of them showing up right at the very end of the movie they should have been there like maybe halfway through and we could have seen them try to escape the company that would have been sick but no we got a movie that feels like the exact same thing we've watched already with a few cool elements that they barely explored another thing i do love about this movie though it has a really grim and dark tone and it's set in this prison and all the prisoners and the way they interact and the chief it's all pretty cool to watch but i haven't even gotten to the biggest crime this film committed they completely just killed off all of the main characters from the second movie which completely undermines the whole second movie and makes it all feel less impactful than it should have been it makes it all feel like it was worth nothing in the second movie ripley escaped the alien infested facility and then went back to save newt the little girl and escaped the facility just for her off screen to drown inside a cryo tube that's so disappointing they could have killed her off but at least have it on screen and make it cooler you know it was very annoying and honestly the the, the cgi is horrible it is bad what the fuck? 
Yo. Yo, what the hell is that, bro? Oh my god. That CGI is not, that's, ain't no good. Now it's an older movie, so I would forgive it, but the two movies before this that had a smaller budget look infinitely better. They hold up, this one does not. I laughed at this shit, dude. It was funny how bad it was. Oh, bro, what, what, really? What the fuck? Da, 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 uh, uh, brother, uh, he's fucking throwing it back, dude. What the fuck? Nah. Is he fucking throwing it back or is he fucking the shit out of him? <laughs> that's, that's not good. This movie does have great moments with practical effects and the alien looks great when it's practical, but when they overuse this dumb CGI alien, it just looks terrible. It's, this, it's awful. So besides some excellent acting and some really interesting story ideas that they did not explore as much as they should have, this movie just isn't that great. It's not horrible. It's just not as good. It's just nowhere near as good as the other ones are. Coming in seventh place is Alien Covenant. <laughs> now this movie committed the same crime as Alien 3. Not as bad. But it still committed the crime. But as a follow-up to Prometheus, it made some really, really bad story decisions that really hurt the story of Prometheus. It makes that movie feel way less important than it should have been. The reason for the bad story decisions is because when Prometheus released, it got some really mixed reviews. So they tried to do a course correction, but it was not executed in the best way. What happened was, in Prometheus, they asked so many interesting questions at the end of the movie. The main character, Elizabeth Shaw, was on a quest to go find the creators, ask them why they were made, what's their purpose all of that philosophical crap that's literally how that film ended and then in this movie in a flashback scene they just genocide and kill all the creators all that setup and build up just for the main character elizabeth shaw to get killed off screen by the robot that she saved who betrayed her and she still saved him he betrayed her again killed her and then genocided all the creators and she was killed off screen too, that's a crime. The characters also make some stupid decisions. For example, they go onto this random planet they've never heard of, they just see a beacon and go there, they take off their helmets, they're like, oh, what, what could be so bad about this air? They just start fucking inhaling the air like there's no tomorrow. They just, <laughs> like, like, breathing it all in and they're all getting infected and shit. Like, they aren't even the slightest bit concerned that this planet that they've never heard of might have something dangerous on it that could kill them. Now, not to be all negative, there are a lot of parts of this movie that I really do enjoy. Michael Fassbender does an excellent job of playing the robots David and Walter. I think the way those two characters interact with each other and the fact that they're being played by the same person is really, really interesting, especially considering that Michael Fassbender plays both of the characters and they both feel distinctly different with their own views on life and the way it should be. It's really cool to watch those philosophies clash and then them fight. The twist ending of this movie was also really, really cool, even if I did see it a mile away. I knew that twist was gonna happen. I called it and it, exactly what I said happened, but it was still really, really interesting. And a great setup for a third movie. <laughs> that we're never gonna get because it got canceled because people didn't like this one either The gore in this movie is also super gnarly and just gross and disgusting as it should be now It was also cool. They brought the xenomorph back except for a lot of it It's also CG high now. It's not as bad as alien 3, but CGI alien just does not look very good Please just stay practical. It looks so much better. Like it'll help you in the long run. It's easy I mean, it's not easy, but just like, it'll help you. The first half of this movie really, really drags with them having to rediscover the aliens again, like they do in every fucking movie. And then it starts to pick up in the second half once David from Prometheus comes back. The second half was actually really, really interesting and it has a lot of exciting moments. David developing a relationship with the aliens. That's really interesting. I would love to see where that goes. We'll never find out, but I, I bet it was cool. Coming in sixth place is Alien vs. Predator Requiem. Now, I know people absolutely fucking hate this movie, all right? It's usually at the bottom of everyone's lists. The biggest reason people hate this movie is because it is so dark. And I'm not even talking about the tone or the story. 
You just can't fucking see anything. There was parts where you literally couldn't tell if the alien and the predator, if they were fighting or if they were fucking. You literally, you, you, I, no one knows. I don't even think the director knows. Now, besides that, in some painfully, extremely bland characters, I think this movie's entertaining as hell. I didn't feel bored watching this one at all. Even though the fights were super, super dark, I still found them really, really fun to watch, and I was able to follow what was going on. I also think it's really, really cool to see the aliens on Earth in like a suburban normal town environment this is the only film we get to see that in and it is so epic watching the military come in and start fighting off the aliens that's so sick they were on earth in the original alien versus predator except it was in the middle of a cave ice pyramid so so they didn't get to really interact with the real world this is really really cool to see the aliens interact with the real world and then the movie almost becomes like an apocalyptic scenario where the main characters have to survive this dark city with all these aliens and predators running around and they have to escape and get to the evac zone before it's too late and they nuke it all. It's so cool. It's really, really cool. This movie also gives extreme 2000s vibes, which I fucking love. It's so 2000s to the point where it's downright hilarious. Hey, Ricky. Hey, Jesse. Supposed to fucking just bring the pizza and not, not try to fuck the customer. Cute outfit, Rick. Yeah, it's in Halloween in October. What the fuck? What the fuck? Bro. That seemed a little uncalled for. He just gave you all pizza. Let's go. <laughs> Let's get out of here, guys. Let's go. What the fuck? This movie's so 2000s, man. I'm like fucking... To the point where it's fucking funny. Unlike the previous Alien vs. Predator, which was PG-13, this one's rated R and it shows. The practical effects and the gore and the kills are really, really good in this movie. And honestly, it reminds me of Freddy vs. Jason, which also came out around this time. Coming in fifth place for me is Alien vs. Predator. <laughs> complaint with this movie is that it was made PG-13 so it could reach a broader audience and because of that it's not as gory or gnarly as it should have been there's not as many great kills in it but despite that this movie has so many fun memorable moments and a lot of really cool action also having this movie set in like the arctic in this old ass pyramid is such a cool environment watching all the creatures fight through the pyramid while setting off these traps and having to navigate the pyramid it is so entertaining now the story and the characters weren't anything amazing they were fine and serviceable but it was enough to bring us some really really amazing set pieces and some great action now some of the practical effects were honestly pretty cool in it for a pg-13 movie it does have its moments i also thought the lead final girl she was a great actress and she was fun to watch they didn't do a lot with her character but she was still fun to watch and I rooted for her. Again, this movie is nothing extraordinary. I describe this movie as like an average Marvel movie that you just turn your brain off and watch for fun, which my brain doesn't even fucking work half the time, so that works for me. Coming in fourth place for me is Alien Romulus. I am so glad this movie was good. Going into this movie, I was really afraid it was gonna be extremely average and mid, just a retread of what we've seen before and just filled with nostalgia and that was it. But boy, I was wrong. Today, Alvarez does such a fucking amazing job. Please give him a second movie. This movie is such a good watch. This film follows a group of teenagers who live on this old mining colony and they find out an old deserted whaling ship is floating up in space so they want to go up there, steal the cryopods, and then fly away and start a new life. Now I won't say anything else because I don't want to get into spoilers, but this movie brings some really, really cool and creepy new things to this franchise. The twist ending in this movie is freaking awesome. Also the two main characters in this, Rain played by Kaylee Spaney and Andy, played by David Johnson, are so good to follow. You truly do care about their characters, and their journeys have such great arcs to them. There's just so many really creative and fun moments that they put into this movie. Now, I won't say what it is, but there's this part where they play with the gravity, so they're all, like, floating. I won't really say anything about it, but it's just really, really cool the way they implement it into the movie. I also just love the cinematography and the color grading. It's stellar. It's probably the best-looking alien movie that we've got yet. This movie also feels like a direct continuation of the original alien movies because the last few movies feel very different in the franchise they feel like their own thing the technology looks different in this movie, they brought back a lot of the old technology, the old aesthetic, and it looks really, really cool. It's definitely a blast from the past. This movie is also gory as hell, has really, really good effects. But this movie does have some aspects that I am not a huge fan of. For example, the first half of this movie does drag on quite a bit. We also do have to rediscover what the aliens are, like we do in every single one, which they handle that pretty well in this one. It wasn't as annoying as it usually is. It's just like, oh, we got to get past this part 
to get to the exciting stuff. It was still fun to watch and it was entertaining. It's just like we've seen it before. But what I really hope they do is that they use this first one with all the setup and discovering the aliens and make a sequel to this one following the same character. There's also quite a few characters in the movie that could have been way more developed. It honestly felt like some of them were just there to fucking die, which is really sad, but that's the truth. There's people like that in the first Alien movie, but in this one it felt like more so. There's also quite a few moments that were thrown in there purely for fan service and nostalgia. Although I did really enjoy them bringing back the old technology and the old aesthetic, I did not really like that they tried to CGI an old actor from the original and put him in this one and it looks kind of weird. I, you look at it and you're like, that doesn't doesn't look right. They tried to bring back a character from the original Alien movies, but unfortunately the actor who played him died four years ago, so they just created him using CGI. And because he died four years ago in 2020, I have no idea whether or not he gave them permission to use his CGI face. Now if he actually worked on this film and was a part of it, that would be a different story. But as an actor, it's heavily debated in my industry whether or not they should be allowed to create CGI models of real life actors without them knowing. Do they get paid for it? Do they not? Do they get a say in it or do they not? It's heavily debated, but I'm not saying anything, all right? I'm just throwing out some thought-provoking questions. Look at me trying to be fucking Prometheus, throwing out all these big philosophical questions. What do you think? Leave in the comments down below. Coming in third place for me is Prometheus. <laughs> I think this movie is awesome. I know some people don't like it. Yes, I know some of the characters can be annoying. Yes, a lot of their dialogue sounds like chat GBT AI people talking to each other. And yes, they can be running away from something rolling in one direction and they just continue to run in that direction instead of maybe going to the side and not dying. But instead they just go straight, even though they can easily go to the side, but they just choose not to. So they just get hit by a rolling thing that's going one way. You could, that could be in the movie. Besides that, I love this movie. Ridley Scott adds some beautiful visuals and the story is just so good. This story follows a crew going back to meet their creators. The main characters in this film have really, really strong motivations. Now Michael Fassbender plays a robot named David who is created by a guy named Wayland and David's creator Wayland is extremely old and about to die. Now his mission is to go and find the human creator to prevent the human Wayland from dying of old age. There's a lot going on in the story so when you first watch you might miss a lot of it but once you actually understand the story and what's happening it's really really good. And the lead character Elizabeth Shaw she simply wants to meet the people who created her and to find answers to the universe. She wants to know why she was made, what's her purpose. How did they create humanity? I love all these ideas and questions about creation, about the human's creator, about how the robot David was created by humans. All these themes and questions it builds helps to tell a really, really strong narrative. Too bad the fucking sequel never happened because they just completely ruined everything in this movie with Alien Covenant, but whatever, it, this is still a good movie. I also love that Ridley Scott kind of brought the horror aspect back to Alien. A lot of the movies before this felt just kind of like action flicks. This movie made Alien genuinely scary again. And there's so many scary and creepy moments in this movie and such good, disgusting body horror. Body horror is like the worst, dude. I always, I squirm, dude. There's a part where a girl cuts open her own stomach and takes out an alien baby. They, they, they like to deep throw in a lot of aliens and I don't know why that is but they just do it a lot and I every time I don't like it it's weird I don't want to see people putting things in their mouths unless it's me I just find this movie to be beautiful and it's such a scary fun watch now the biggest complaint a lot of people have for this movie is that it doesn't feel like an alien movie because there is like absolutely no xenomorphs or face huggers in the movie there's one xenomorph in like the last minute of the movie like literally the last minute and then the credits roll that does suck but at the same time, I think the movie we got was really, really good, and I don't actually mind that as much. I still think it's a great addition to the series. Coming in second place is the original classic, Alien. This movie is amazing. Sigourney Weaver is an incredible final girl, might be one of the best final girls in all of horror history. She gives an amazing performance and her character is excellent. The twist that Ash was actually a robot and working against the humans with the company, that was such a great twist, I didn't even see that coming. And the fact that he was supposed to be a robot wasn't even in the original Alien script, which is really cool. One of the producers actually ended up adding it to the script and damn, it was a good addition. In this movie, I went into it with no knowledge 
of any of the aliens, what was going to happen at all. This movie has such a good suspenseful build up to the aliens and really uses the power of the unknown to its full potential. You have no idea what's about to go down. Especially when that guy, he finds the eggs in the ship, he gets the face hugger in him, and then he gets an egg in him, but you don't know that. The thing just goes off of his face and you think he's fine, but then deep down you know something's off and then he just, it just comes out of his stomach, dude. That's scary, man. And when it does, all the gore and the practical effects in this movie are incredible. They are amazing. It's gnarly and disgusting and they hold up so well. And the Xenomorph actually looks amazing in it. Like, he looks awesome and this is from 1979. Not only that, the way this movie is shot, it's very claustrophobic, which really adds to the amazing atmosphere that it has. And when they were filming it, because they actually built like a whole ship with like ceilings and all the sides were there, it was kind of hard to find room for the camera, but I think it actually really, really worked in their favor. Now, besides Ripley and Ash, a lot of the other human characters are pretty bland and boring. They're just kind of there to die. They still had a lot of personality and charm, and I think this movie is a really, really great movie and definitely a classic. Coming in first place for me is, I don't think this is a surprise to anyone, Aliens. made the sequel to Terminator and it is one of the greatest sequels of all time and then he made a sequel to Alien and he outdid it and made the greatest film in this franchise. This movie takes everything the first film did and builds on it. We also get to follow Sigourney Weaver once again so it's really cool to follow her arc and watch her grow as a character. I also love that we do not retread all the same stuff we did in the last movie. We actually, we just get right into it and it's so good. So much action. This movie feels so much bigger on every single front more aliens more guns more action higher stakes more characters everything is just bigger now i do believe this movie does lose a lot of the horror aspects that the original had i think what we got is worth it and where the first one ended i do think it's a natural progression for it to become action in the second one the plot of this movie is sigourney weaver's character ripley she travels down to a colony that's on the planet from the first alien movie the colony lost contact so she's there to go find out what happened and rescue any survivors and she goes along with a group of marines now i'm a huge fan of the halo franchise and the halo games took a lot of inspiration from specifically this movie especially when you watch the marines you can really see where halo drew his inspirations from the marines are incredibly fun to watch they are super fucking funny and there's a lot of marines and every single damn one of them is entertaining i love watching them walk around i love all their equipment i just you just can't stop watching them it's so fun this film also feels perfectly paced the introduction of the alien queen is a great addition and Ripley's character arc of motherhood is great to see. This movie just keeps on ranting and building up as it goes. The suspense never goes away until it's over and it's such a great experience. Overall, full of action, good storytelling, and this movie definitely earns its reputation of being a classic of cinema. was my ranking of the Alien franchise. Let me know your guys' thoughts and rankings of this franchise in the comments down below because I really do want to hear and I will reply to you. This franchise features some of the greatest directors of our lifetime. So many great classics of cinema. Definitely check these movies out if you haven't. Alright, let me know what franchise I need to check out next and I'll see y'all in the next one, alright? Goodbye. Apply online in minutes and get funds deposited the next business day or sooner. Net credit. I thought the ad was over. I, 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 I.